on TV. So the Boys and Girls Club has been in existence for um, 57 years um, here in Rome, Georgia. We started in the back of the Marine Corps Armory in West Rome before we were uh, able to have a building and then a group of men came together and saw what good things were happening, raised the money and built the West Rome unit. We stayed a boys club for the first 25 years or 30 years of our existence and then in 1991 I was actually the president of the uh, club when we took in girls and that was an exciting thing to make it uh, an opportunity for young women that the boys had had for a long time. So we became a boys and girls club in 91. The mission of the boys and girls club is to enable all young people, especially those who need us most, to realize their full potential as productive, caring, responsible citizens. We, what we started here in South Rome is a program called Servant Leadership. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to enable our young people to know that it's their hands that make the difference in this world. That, that the impact that they receive here is an impact that can carry over and that they can give to other people. Um, this facility in here in South Rome is a great example of how we reached out to kids who need us most because we have a freestanding teen center where they have their own separate entrance, separate building, everything in it is tailor-made just for a young person between the ages of 13 and 18. Not just the program, but from the size of the, the stools to um, the technology that's in there to the colors, everything is made specifically for them. Um, some people think the Boys and Girls Club is just daycare, like we just let the kids play all day and, and watch movies and those kind of things. And then some people are kind of thinking, well, if we had the kids here, they're just shooting basketball or something like that. And we're really just kind of breaking down that, that idea that people have um, by allowing all these different programs that are just quality and they're impactful um, and the kids are just getting so much out of it. Almost 90% of our children are what the state would consider income eligible, so that means they live at or below the poverty level. But these are kids who are giving back to the community. These are kids who brought their gently used toys and put them in a little shoebox this Christmas and sent them all across the world for other kids to have. And so I've spent the last 13 years of my life working hard and, and pushing this mission in different places because I know that what we do works. When you look at a grade point average overall, when an organization as a whole has an 86% grade point average, when 100% when when of your seniors are graduating and graduating on time, um, it just gives me goosebumps to even think about it now. Now that doesn't happen many places in, a, in the general population, but within a population that we generally serve that has a lot of needs, that's pretty fabulous. The Boys and Girls Club, here in South Rome, um, as soon as we unlocked our doors the first day, it's almost been like a lighthouse to this community. I mean, it's just been, there's tons of kids are coming through our door every day. You know, you work from 130 to 150 kids just on, these, this, uh, on the youth center daily. I do have kids that, uh, who are now aspiring to, to do more in the community and go to school because of, you know, what the Boys and Girls Club has done for them. Uh, coming here has changed them tremendously as individuals, and, um, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful of that. that. That's another effect that the club has really had. We, we take these young people and uh, we begin to mold and shape and change their lives. We employ many of them, so at a very young age, 
they have the, the opportunity to have a, a job experience that helps kind of frame their future. Parents are seeing how much we're putting into their kids and their grades are going up in school. Um, they're getting involved with a lot of different activities that they're, like I said, that they're not exposed to. And it's just showing a, a really positive movement in, in, in the community scene also. We contributed to the local economy by almost $30,000 in, in two employment programs that we did over the summer with our young people. And um, we've been told, we know that this past summer was really difficult for a lot of families economically, that sometimes those children were the only ones that had an, an income in that household. We also have a vision of creating a generation of servant leaders. Um, recently we received um, recognition for number one being the best overall program in the state of Georgia. Um, compared to every other Boys and Girls Club in the state, all of our programs were considered the best. And we were also named the number one character and leadership development program. In my own words, the mission of the Boys and Girls Club is to have a positive impact on the young people of, the, of this community. Volunteers are so vital to the Boys and Girls Club. Um, like I've said before, the staff members here are phenomenal. Their hearts are here for the right reasons and they want to have a positive impact on our young people. So they're kind of our cake and our, you know, and cake's good, cake's good by itself, but volunteers are the frosting on that cake. Not only are they changing somebody else's lives, they're changing their lives as well. You know, staff come on and work at the Boys and Girls Club and the next thing you know, just because of the environment, they're dreaming dreams. And our mission and our, our strategies and principles begin to work on the staff too. And they go back to college and they're trying to get healthy and, and they're changing their life as well. It just really makes you feel very good. So if somebody contacts me and they say, hey, I want to volunteer. The first thing I want them to do is I want them to come sit down, talk to me. I want to know why they want to volunteer. Um, I want to know what their passion is in life. If somebody comes in here and they want to you know, work with kids and they are passionate about, I mean anything, basket weaving, if that's their passion, that's what they love to do at home, if they can come in and we can set them up in the right environment, our kids will love basket weaving. If it's flowers, our kids will love flowers, photography, whatever that person's passion is, if they will express it and be passionate about that, our kids will buy into it. With the Boys and Girls Club, we have a lot of lofty goals. We have a lot of things that we're striving for, um, that we want to help young people achieve, that we want to reach out to underserved populations, or we want to continue to be, um, have small hubs in the middle school and high school with teenagers, those, those kids who really need us most right now. Um, so in order to do all of those things, we need an investment from the community. Um, without that, the clubs cannot survive. We are very different from school systems or government-run programs or anything like that in that we, we have to raise the money. We have to raise the shortfall, which in some years is as much as two or three hundred thousand dollars a year. That's tough. We want the donors to know that when they give us dollars, if they specify something, if they want it to go towards something very specific, that that's exactly what it's going towards. We want to be able to fully disclose all of our financial statements. Once they come to the Boys and Girls Club, they will feel real good about what their money did because it's making a huge difference in the community. But I want you to find what you can give to these children um, and bring that to life. Because you never know when you might open the mind of a child. You never know when you might spark a dream. You never know when you might be the one to truly make a difference in the life of a child. So uh, uh, a lot of opportunities.